<laughs> Hi friends, it's Papa Dale here, your old pal, one more time, here to discuss Christ versus culture. The, do the topic for today is truth trumps sincerity. Now, I don't mean Donald Trump, but uh, the idea is the bridge term trumps uh, truth is more important than sincerity. Now, this uh, Bible teaching series is based on 1 John 2.15, which says, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. And uh, what that means is prioritize Christ most highly in your life. You were created to have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, if you deny that relationship, then you're not fulfilling the purpose for which you were created. So, so uh, put Jesus Christ, uh, prioritize him most highly in your life. Now, this is just one of literally hundreds of uh, videos that I'm making that are made uh, based on articles that I've written uh, about Christ versus culture. Uh, the culture tries to indoctrinate you and teach you uh, about things that are anti-God. And Christ tries to teach you and help you understand the true nature of the purpose for which you were created, which is to have a loving, interactive relationship with God. So lots of different topics on this playlist. You can just kind of buzz through them and uh, see them for yourself. Now, who am I? Well, I'm Papa Dale. Don't you recognize me? <laughs> I am a retired pastor, teacher, theologian, chaplain. You know, in 50 plus years, a person tends to do a whole lot of things in service to the Lord Jesus Christ. One of the things that I did was I supported myself by being a businessman, for example. And so scripture says, in everything you do, do for the glory of the Lord. So I try to apply that in my life and have tried to apply that in my life. Now, if you want to know more about me, you can go to a video that I made, uh, Papa Dale intro, video number zero. It's on most of the Bible-related uh, play playlists on this channel. And it's important that you should want to know who your Bible teachers are. Scripture says that in the end times, there are going to be a lot of false teachers that arise. And uh, you want to make sure that you're listening to good Bible-based teaching. So check out everything that I say. Check out everything anybody who claims to be a Bible teacher says. Um, oh, there's a hair from my beard. Get rid of that. Oh, okay. <laughs> Check out anything any Bible teacher says with the Word of God. It's got to be consistent with the Word of God. So, here's the topic for today. Truth trumps sincerity. Imagine that you and I were walking along a forest trail enjoying the beauty. Just think about it. We're in the forest we're walking along. You look down to see a nice growth of wild parsley beside the trail. Cool! Being a lover of wild-grown fruits and berries, you reach down and take a clump of parsley. Oh, awesome! It tastes sweet, and you slowly savor every morsel. There's only one problem. It's not parsley. Now, it looked like parsley, parsley. You sincerely believe that it is parsley. In fact, you've heard from others that wild parsley grows on this trail. But the truth is, in reality, it is wild poison hemlock. You just unwittingly have eaten deadly poison hemlock. And to make it worse, Hemlock can take up to three hours to make you sick and kill you. But, you really believed that it was parsley, man. Is your sincerity of belief going to protect you? Okay, now imagine this. You decide to go visit your uncle at his house. Now, you've never been there before, but you're confident that you're smart. You're smart enough to find it. You know how to follow directions. 
And so you drive off confident that you have you will have no problem. You drive into his neighborhood. You find the house with the house number. So you go to the door and ring the bell. Now what you didn't know was that his house is on Oak Street Southeast. And you are on Oak Street Northeast. You're very self-assured that at any moment your uncle will open the door with warm greetings. But will he? Now you believe he will. You think he will. You sincerely have confidence and faith that your uncle is going to open the door and give you a big hug. Never even enters your mind that you might be at the wrong place. You're in the right town. You're in the right neighborhood. Even the house number is correct. Will your sincerity of belief make the person who opens the door be your uncle? <laughs> is it possible, while you were sincere, that you were sincerely wrong? Turns out that the truth in both of those situations trumps sincerity. Sincerity has value, but the value that sincerity has, it borrows from truth. That's why it's important for us, for you and for me, to focus not on what we hope to believe to be true, even when we might like what we believe, even if it's what we have believed our whole life, with great sincerity, even if it's what our parents believed, even if it's what the leaders in our religious organization believed. It's important that we believe what is actually true. Now, in the end... Are you willing to drop your sincere but wrong beliefs for what is actually true? Are you willing to bet your life on it? I shared an office one time in a business environment with a fellow who was a relatively important leader in the Jehovah's Witness cult in my home state, the state of Washington. Now, he had a background in construction, and he was the lead person among that group for building all of the, the worship centers, all of the buildings, uh, the Jehovah's Witness Kingdom Halls, they call them. And so he would uh, be the, the lead contract person who would organize the people, organize all the subcontractors, build all of the buildings. And so he was a very, very popular, respected leader among the Jehovah's Witness cult. And from time to time, he knew I was born again Christian and former pastor. And from time to time, we would have some uh, theological discussions now, we didn't really get into it hot and heavy uh, because we had to share office space together. So we didn't want to make sure we didn't we wanted to make sure that we didn't have any feelings of animosity personally or anything. So um, we, we kept it uh, on the lighter side. But one day I asked him, I said, Alan, let me ask you a question. If, at some point in time, I or anyone else could sincerely, honestly prove to you that Jesus Christ is God, is deity, would you be willing to drop your Jehovah's Witness belief that he was just merely a man and believe and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ as God. 
and he stopped and he thought about it. Kind of turned a little bit white as he was thinking. And if memory serves, uh, I don't think that he ever really answered the question. I don't know if he even responded. I don't remember a response. He may have just walked away. But you see, that's like the the rich young ruler that came to Jesus and, and said, uh, what must I do to receive eternal life? And Jesus said, you've got to keep all the commandments and believe on Yahweh and trust in him for your salvation. But you've, the evidence of that is you've got to keep all of the commandments. And the rich young ruler said, well, I have. I've done that my whole life. What else do I need? And Jesus said, you've got to sell everything that you have and you have to come and follow me. In other words, you have to stop depending on your great wealth and you have to sincerely trust in and believe on me, the Lord God, Jesus Christ. And the rich, the scripture says the rich young ruler went away very sad because he had great wealth. See, his wealth was an idol to him. And in the case of my friend Alan, the importance of his position in his grew in his cult group was important to him. He enjoyed very much the the position of prestige. You know, it's similar to Caiaphas, the high priest of the Sanhedrin that condemned Jesus. Caiaphas knew that Jesus was God. Caiaphas knew he was Yahweh. Caiaphas had seen the miracles that Christ had performed. He knew. But he was unwilling to give up his own position of power in the political religious organization known as the Sanhedrin. He was willing to deny the truth for the sake of his position. Now, you can believe something sincerely or you can believe the truth. And the two aren't necessarily always the same. The only place you can find the truth about God, about Christ, about the ethics of the Lord Jesus is in the scripture. And what we need to do as believers is no matter who tries to teach us anything about scripture, we need to be like the Berean church was in Acts 17, verse 11. They heard the Apostle Paul preaching the gospel. And after they, they listened to the preaching, after they went home, they searched the scriptures to try to understand if what he taught them was true. Truth always trumps sincerity. So, my friends, those are my thoughts on the subject of truth, trump, sincerity. If you have comments, questions, or prayer requests, you can leave them down below in the comment section. Or there's a link to my Facebook page. You can leave them there. And there's also a link down there for these lesson notes. And so you can go to those lesson notes and you can read those. Now, the next video is I never know what. <laughs> Holy Spirit changes it up on me uh, quite frequently. So I never know, but they're always good, and they're always led by the Holy Spirit because I pray every day that the Lord Jesus Christ, through the Holy Spirit, would inspire me, motivate me, and empower me to do His will and to share the truth with you. And so, until the next video... This is your old pal Papa Dale saying, I'm signing off for now, and I'm going to be praying for you that you will be well and be blessed. <laughs>